Hello. So uh, Tim Vine is an English comedian best known for his stand-up work and his role on the BBC series Not Going Out. With a reputation for quick-fire jokes and puns, he won the Best Joke Award at the Edinburgh Fringe in 2010 for the line, I've just been on a once-in-a-lifetime holiday. I'll tell you what, never again. <laughs> He's also come runner-up. <laughs> well done, Harry. <laughs> He's also come runner-up for the same award uh, three times. He once broke the Guinness World Record for the number of jokes told in an hour, telling 499, each of which had to receive a laugh. He's the author of three joke books and the brother of Jeremy Vine, the BBC presenter. On behalf of everyone here, I'd like to thank Tim for coming to the union. Please welcome Tim Vine. Thank you so much. I don't know whether you've heard this one. I've just been on a once-in-a-lifetime holiday. <laughs> well, that was, uh, that was marvellous. You really warmed them up for me. <laughs> You're welcome. This is your front room, yes? Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's that's lovely. Very nice. Got a few cities in here. Yes. Um, so yes. you've, actually, you've been to the Union before. I have, yeah. I burgled it in 1987. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I came, I think, in this very room, yeah. I think someone... Uh, in fact, when exactly may, was it that you... Uh, when? Yeah. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I think it might have been about ten years ago. Okay. Yeah. But was it set out differently, or has it always been like this? Has it been like this for like 500 years? Is it, <laughs> was Probably. It set? Probably more like 199, but a long time. No, no, that's all right. I, I, well, you know, if you know the dates. <laughs> <laughs> But it's great. It certainly, it sort of works for a comedy gig. You, uh, you have the, the comic facing a gap, and then you two <laughs> groups of people facing each other. <laughs> I'm surprised they haven't designed more theatres like this, to be honest with you. It's a, it really, really works. <laughs> and the lights are mainly on them. In every way, it's perfect. Yeah, exactly. Hi there. What are you studying? My knees. All right. <laughs> Medicine. All right. So I went to the doctors. Thanks for coming. I, I, um, <laughs> I said, whenever I pass from one country to another, I have to get drunk. He said, you're borderline alcoholic. Come on! <laughs> the balcony is popular. <laughs> so I want to ask, do you yes. still hold the Guinness World Record? No, I don't. You don't? No, no, I held it for about eight months. Um, and then someone in Australia um, beat it, yeah, yeah. I remember I went to Australia once, and um, I, uh, <laughs> this bloke said to me, he said, who did you fly with? I said, I don't know the names of all the other passengers, <laughs> which is a joke. <laughs> um, but when I was out in Australia, I swam with dolphins, and it was, uh, it was amazing. And I actually had to dress up as a dolphin to do it, which, to be honest, I needed like a hole in the head. <laughs> <laughs> but me and those dolphins, we just clicked. <laughs> Very good. But no, the record, I, I told 499 jokes yeah. in an hour, and then someone from Australia beat that. But here's an interesting thing, and, I, and uh, I'm not entirely sure this is, this is totally fair, but, but um, I was told when I did it that you were allowed 20 words as cues. So you, you could tell as many jokes as you can, but you had mm. 20 words written down, that was it. So I had 20 words written down, but when the next guy did it, he, did, he had 20 cards. Ooh. That's totally different, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, I'm not sure whether... We shouldn't all um, go to Australia and kill him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he... So uh, you, but anyway, yeah. you tempted to try again, to, to trump that record. What was the number of jokes that he uh, made? He did 500 and something, I think. Um, yeah, occasionally I think about it. But I've got a, I've got a certificate on my wall that says I did yeah. it. And if I, if I beat him, then I think I'd have a second certificate. And then he'd probably beat me. And I'd be in pretty much the same situation. Yeah. But I'd have two certificates. <laughs> So I'm quite happy with the lack of effort and one certificate. Yeah, no, fair enough. Right. And in terms of sort of the sheer number of the jokes that you tell in a given show... 499 was yeah, the sheer well, number. That's yeah. a good example. Yeah. So when, when you do a tour, yes. um, do you always tell your jokes in the same order, or do you like to mix and match? Can you turn the audience <laughs> up a bit? The, um, uh, I... Uh, Oh, that's very good. Or do you... Oh, that's very good. Thanks. It's sort of... Uh, 
Let's see how many times we can do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, in fact, earlier on today, just to say that uh, um, Alon was on, on, the, uh, on the case, I said that my train would, you know, I would arrive if, uh, if, if the train was on time. And he said, it sounds like it's running on track or something like that. So he was, and I thought, right, he's, uh, he's hilarious. <laughs> um, but, um, so I can't do that one now, well on. Yeah, um, exactly. But uh, I forgot the question. Yeah, no, what I tend to do, if I've got a new hour of stuff, I tend to pretty much do that hour. And then I, then I might, halfway through it, if it's sort of going well, I might occasionally drop in a few from the back catalogue. And then mm. if, uh, if everyone then laughs, I think, oh, okay. They haven't heard that stuff. And yeah. So then I just put a bit more in. And then it all gets a bit mixed up. But mainly I do the sort of new hour. Mm. And then at the end I come on and sing a couple of songs and things. So do you find they always come out in exactly the same order? Or? Uh, yeah, if you rehearse something, it tends to, it tends to stick in the order you've mm. rehearsed it. I don't know whether you... I mean, have you, have you ever been a player or anything like that? A lot of you ever... Because <laughs> it would be a bit odd, drama. wouldn't it, if you came out... Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, that's a very it's Hamlet, point. and your first first <laughs> line was, and the rest is silence. That wouldn't work. <laughs> Do you know, I said to this bloke, I said, I'm appearing in Hamlet at the Globe Theatre. He said, are you being facetious? I said, no, Polonius. <laughs> Medicine. <Right. laughs> uh, yeah, so it tends to come out in the right order. Or if yeah. I start forgetting things, I normally have a, a table with some props in it um, mm -hmm. on my right, and I have next to me um, next to the, the props on a piece of paper, I have my act written down. So sometimes I go to the props like that, and I'm actually having a cheeky look at the, what's yeah. next. Because okay. it's very easy to forget, isn't it? What of you're course. doing. Yeah. I like this backdrop. Was this, is this, I mean, you've got this lovely pine, and then suddenly that. <laughs> but uh, it's nice, though. Do you find those things that they're a bit of a nuisance? Or they don't, how long have you had that one for? This one here. Well, and that one. Oh, or, or have you had, has one lasted, did you get them made at the same time? They do tend to fall apart. Yeah, they do, don't they? Because I've had them on, um, I've had them on tour, actually, and funnily enough, they, they <laughs> the, the problem you get with them is it is a sort of bowing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> actually, that's all right. <laughs> I, I think it's more of an Airbus. It's a what? It's an Airbus. It's an Airbus. He's doing a Boeing joke. Come on! Hey. Come on, Alon! It's, uh, there you are, you just, uh, you just got it all to flat, there we are, that's better, right, okay, right, <laughs> okay. as you were. So, um, another yes. thing I wanted to ask was, um, yes. <clears throat> do your jokes work abroad, or just guys? Um, or just what? Or just guys. Or just... <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I'm not being rude, or do just guys. Work, do your jokes. Oh, abroad, uh, work, <laughs> work abroad, oh I see, or just, yeah, they don't quite work, do they work abroad, oh, or do they work a guy? I tried. Work a guy? Yeah. Yeah, is that what you said? Yes, more oh. or less. Well, yeah, because abroad is singular, that's what threw me. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's best that we don't try and write in front of these people, I think. Um, we should have coordinated. We should have coordinated. Um, yeah, no, well, I, what was the question again, abroad? So, yeah, do your jokes work abroad? You... Uh, sometimes they do, but it has to be to people, if, if, if it's an English person who's abroad. Mm. Yeah. Um, that, that always works best. If it's someone who can't speak the language I'm speaking in, I think you know the answers to some of these questions. <laughs> some of them. Um, but I've, I've done quite a few um, stuff to expats, hmm. <coughs> which is quite a small group, really, people who used to be called Patrick. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, um, so I've, gone, I've done gigs in Shanghai and hmm. Hong Kong, but it's pretty much always to people who yeah. you know, are from Streatham. <laughs> they just happen to be out there. Yes. Yeah. I, have to, I remember once I was in Hong Kong and they, they had a comedy club in Hong Kong and it was four expats and while I was out there someone said, oh, can you do this um, corporate for us and uh, he said, you just have to go along to a dinner, do 20 minutes and there were about 10 tables with 10 people on each at this thing and I said, yeah, right, it was a bit of extra money at the time so I said, okay and um, one table was expats and the rest were, were, they spoke English but it was, because it was sort of broken English mm -hmm. it, they really didn't know what, all this sort of you know, puns. They wouldn't have got your broad joke. Let's put it that way. Yeah. I didn't, and I'm not from... <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, and it was, I just, I couldn't have died any, any worse, you know, it was... Uh, yeah. But still, yeah, so it's good fun, isn't it, dying? I mean, not the last bit. I mean, you know, just the... Uh, uh, you're too young to hear about death, aren't you? You're all... Uh, <laughs> got your lives ahead of you. Let me patronise you. Now, um, another question. I seem to be walking into a cul-de-sac now. <laughs> 
Well, I mean, puns are quite sort of, I've always thought that puns are very British. Wordplay, very, yeah. very British humour. Yeah, I agree. When but you take it to somewhere like Canada or the States or Australia, do you find you get the same response to Well, Australia to culturally are very similar to us. So, so I've done the Melbourne Comedy Festival a couple of times and I did a show where I had, say, maybe a couple of hundred jokes in it or something and I had to remove maybe ten. So not much. Whereas if I went to America, you'd have to remove, you'd have, you could keep ten. And you knew this before you, before you even started or sort of... Uh, well, no, I, I sort of, I think I, I think I might have tried it because mm. I was doing like 27 shows or something. And on the first night, I realised those ten had to go because they literally will go like that, and that's when you realise that it's got to, it's got, you've got to get rid of it. But but mostly though, in Australia, they, they've got a lot of art, the same chocolate bars and culture, the same TV yeah. programs, quite a lot of them. Um, whereas, like I say, I, I once did a club in um, uh, Los Angeles. I was doing ten minutes. And everyone who was on before me came on, and each one of them did this pretty much did the same thing. They'd come on and go, Hi, I'm from West Hollywood. And, and this isn't the accent, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm from West Hollywood, and, and, and it's like this there. And that's basically what they said. Hi, I'm from South Central, and it's like this there. Hi, did, I'm did from Did you say, Hi, I'm from Team, and it's like. Well, I should have. <laughs> I went on and made no reference. The fact that they all spoke in an American accent and said, hi, I'm from, and it's like this. I went on, hello, and immediately they want to know where I am and what it's like. And I said, uh, I went to the butchers. <laughs> and, and then I, um, so they were transfixed by, by uh, my accent. I think they wanted me to talk about where I was from. So I don't, it didn't really go very well. And I said, so I said to this bloke, bloke, what's a bloke? <laughs> they didn't know. Pretty much everything I said, they had no idea what I was yeah. on about. Like this. But yeah, no, it's, yeah, so that was, um, I think I started with, I went to the butchers, he said, I bet you £10, you can't reach those two bits of meat. I said, I'm not betting. He said, why not? I said, the stakes are too high. <laughs> it was time for a joke, Alon, there was a nasty silence. Well, I was going to suggest, should I, should I try another one? Yes, I want to hear, I like the fact that you're right, throwing them in every now and again. Joke. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> here we go. I'll, yeah. I'll give it a go. So, um, Pace is everything, Alon, pace is everything. <laughs> I've got to make sure I don't get this wrong. So, um, Tim, right. has, Tim has various talents concerning uh, facial features, or so I ear. <laughs> yeah, well, um, and am I going to laugh? Who knows? Um, um, who those? knows? <laughs> there you go. I was, I was thinking, where do I Gin and tonic, yeah, yeah. gone. And then, yes? Oh, you, we're going to do another one? I was going to carry on chin wagging. Ah! Um, so... For those who don't know what I'm talking about, um, there are various things... I think things they've worked them out. I don't think <laughs> yeah. There are various things you can do with your ears, including a trick that you've incorporated into one of your acts involving throwing a pen into the air and catching it behind your ear. I can do that, yeah. Um, did that, how did that come about? Is that related to your darts, talents? No, it was I just one day I had a pen in my hand and I thought, I'm going to try and catch that behind my ear. <laughs> and, uh, and blow me, I flipping did it. But I used, to do, I used to do it with just one flip, so, so imagine that's a pen, it used to go whoosh, like that. And then I, I thought, I'll try and do it, just, you know, one, one flip, yeah. flip round. Do you, have, do you haven't got a CD player in here, have you? Possibly up there. Is there a CD player up there? No? <laughs> I was changing the subject, really. I just wanted to know what stuff was in here. Anyway, back to what you were saying. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> um, well, would you like to see me catch a pen behind me? Uh, yeah, if you'd like to demonstrate. Right, we've got, we've certainly gone in very early with what I would, is normally the show closer. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> was there someone sitting there when I came out? Is everyone leaving one at a time? <laughs> okay, well, is it this... Um, you brought a pen especially. Uh, well, no, pens are not that hard to come by, actually. <laughs> 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 <This, laughs> it's, uh, you should use them, they're great. <laughs> um, I say, well, actually, uh, this one is. Has anyone got, a, uh, anyone got any? Uh, I prefer a big one, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, thank you for, for your, your enthusiasm. <laughs> what I say is, it's almost as though you've been waiting to say that. All, look, let's have a little look. Can I have a look at the pen you've got? See whether or not it's uh, uh, a pencil case. You've got your pencil case. I, I actually can't catch a pencil case behind my ear. <laughs> but uh, thank, uh, I think. Um, Pardon? Is that, uh, it needs to, <laughs> right? This is the seat of learning and you're trying to find a, a pen to throw behind my ear. I need, I need a top on it. And I'll tell you for why, because I always have the top facing to.
So, oh, sorry, that's uh, dropped a bit short. That promises. <laughs> well, okay. So the uh, yeah, that's perfect. That is perfect. What's the best? Can you all see like that? Then is that the, right? <clears throat> now, what I normally do is uh, I normally have some music, which is why I, I asked. I forgot to bring it with me. To be honest. So. And the music goes, pen behind the ear, pen behind the ear. Bear in mind, I'm the one losing all the dignity here, so. <laughs> so, pen behind the ear, 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 pen behind You're very good, you're very good. Pen behind the ear. Pen behind the ear, 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 pen Don't stop, don't stop. Pen behind the ear, pen behind the ear. Keep just keep going. How long when do we start? Same thing, not very good. Pen behind the ear, pen behind the ear. Have I really been asked to Cambridge to do this? <laughs> pen behind the ear, pen behind the ear, pen behind the ear, pen behind the ear. Ah, that's that's actually a new thing. We've lost the pen. <laughs> ah, here we go. Right, here we go. Pen behind the ear, pen behind the ear, pen behind the ear, pen behind the ear, pen behind the ear. <laughs> That's actually never happened. I just thought I'd go for it. <laughs> pen behind the ear, pen behind the ear, pen behind the ear, pen behind the ear, pen behind the ear. It's a bit embarrassing, isn't it? Behind the ear, pen behind the ear, pen behind the ear, pen behind the ear, pen behind the ear. I've never not done it. Pen behind the ear. Pen behind the ear, pen behind the ear. That's close. Pen behind the ear, pen behind the ear, pen behind the ear. There's a lot of hair to catch it on. Pen behind the ear, pen behind. Not just me. Come on. Pen behind the ear, 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 pen behind the ear. Behind the ear, pen behind the ear, pen behind the ear. Behind the ear, pen behind the ear, pen behind the ear. Oh! Behind the ear, pen 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 behind the ear. Pen behind the ear. Pen behind the ear. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the other ear. <laughs> that was a bit more, a bit That's more difficult than foreseen. Yes, it's. Uh, I do that for a living. <laughs> and I want to say, like Jesse Jackson apparently said, the day, I want you to dream about being able to have a job like that, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I don't know what you're studying, but imagine ending up doing that for a living. Uh, physics, I suppose, would help that, wouldn't it? I don't know why I'm looking at you. It was medicine, wasn't it? <laughs> um, well, yes, there we are. As we've just seen, a lot of your acts aren't entirely pun-based. Quite a lot of... No, that certainly wasn't pun-based. <laughs> <laughs> Pen-based, maybe. It was pen-based, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Penslinger, um, pen yeah, you're right, yeah. But a lot of them are based on a lot more surreal comedy. Where do you Some come up it. with things like Flag Hippo? <laughs> well, you see, Flag Hippo, for those of you who haven't seen that, I, I, what I do in my acts is I... Um, well, I haven't done it for a while, to be honest, but <laughs> I, I say, please welcome Flag Hippo, and a guy <laughs> comes on dressed as a hippo holding a chart of flags, and he goes, Flag Hippo, Flag Hippo, which one's Canada? And he starts pointing at the wrong ones. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then I, I tell him off in no uncertain terms. <laughs> so that's that bit. Yeah, that's uh, for some reason that's quite a popular section. Um, yeah. <laughs> the but when they've just seen me throwing a pen behind my ear, you know, it's, it's 
really anywhere is up after that. So, uh, <laughs> um, but the, how I came up with that was very simple. I, I t- some, what I do, I, I have this habit of buying props before I've got a joke for it. Yeah. So, I was in Smiths in um, yeah. I was in Smiths in Epsom. Life's full of Epsom Downs. As one does. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and, I, and I saw this lovely chart of flags. And I thought, I'm going to buy that. <laughs> and I didn't know why. But I bought it. I took it home. And it's as often the case, I have these props in my front room that I've, and I haven't got jokes for them. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then at a later date, I was in a, a local restaurant called The American Way in Cheam. And, uh, and I was thinking to myself, I'd write some things from my act. And I thought, well, what have I not used before? And I thought, well, I haven't done anything with a hippo. So I wrote down the word hippo. And I thought, oh, I've got that chart of flags at home. (laughs) I thought, oh, flag hippo. I haven't haven't combined those two things I haven't done before. (laughs) And it really was as simple as that. Yeah. Does that then apply to your other songs as well? Well, yeah, it's... uh, yeah, I mean, uh, th- of course, it doesn't always... For some reason, people like that. Um, Hedgehog Air Balloon wasn't such a success. <laughs> um, so it didn't take off. Uh, it <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't do that again. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> Yes, Hedgehog Air Balloon. Actually, I, do mean, I keep meaning to bring back Hedgehog Air Balloon. It might work. But yeah, so the, so the, the fact is, I sometimes I, I write stuff that's just nonsense, and then I include it in my act, yeah. and then see what works and what doesn't. If you're thinking of doing comedy, the thing to do is to let yourself write rubbish. Good tip. <laughs> did, you, did you sort of walk straight into comedy, or did you sort of have other career paths beforehand? No, I never had any career paths. In fact, to be honest, comedy wasn't a career path for me. It just that, it was a hobby, really, that I, that, that's... Um, I, it was just something like, like, at the moment I played darts a lot, it was a bit like that. It was like something I just wanted to get better at. Unfortunately, the darts is... Do you have a dart board here, by the way? What is it? Well, you've got to have a dart board in a bar. What's why I don't have dart boards anymore? All right, then. <laughs> um, but you should have... Pardon? Health and safety. Health and safety. Right. What an inspirational young man you are. <laughs> no, it's true, they could do, yeah. But I mean, oh, yeah, this, that, yeah, that could apply to a chair as well, to be honest. <laughs> if a chair goes through the air and hits someone, that's also quite painful. There's no, there's no obvious games where you throw three chairs at a target, but... Yeah, it would be less dartful. Less dartful. It would be less dartful. <laughs> But yes, so, so that, it was more like that. It was more the case of um, I, I was working in an office in Croydon, which if you've not yeah. been is like Stonehenge with windows. <laughs> and, uh, and I was a bit bored by it. And I, and I um, discovered this uh, comedy club in London. It was advertised, said it was um, a new act night where you just ring up and um, put your name on a list. 12 acts do five minutes each. And the winner gets 25 quid. So I thought, oh, that sounds like a laugh. So uh, hopefully. And so I put my name down, went along and did five minutes. And uh, I think I got one laugh in my first five. And uh, it was quite a good laugh, though. Yeah. I said to someone, what's your name? She said, my name's Kim. And I said, it's better than Vim. <laughs> and it got, that, laugh yeah. it got. <laughs> that laugh it got. But that was enough to bring me back the following week. <laughs> um, How long does it take you to win the £25? <clears throat> about a year. <laughs> Genuinely about a year. But, I, but even then, you see, I was... I, I just, I was doing five minutes, doing five minutes every Wednesday night. I used to go from my, the, the office job that I was doing in Croydon, which was a <coughs> job that I wasn't interested in anyway. And I used to go to this place. And it was a very happy time, to be honest. I used to go along and do this five minutes. And then I just, it's like when you discover something that you've never, that you've not done before. And, and there's so many clubs in London. And it was very, you know, you think, God, look, there's another comedy club there. Another one there. Oh, I'm going to do five minutes there, five minutes there. And then it kind of just gradually grew from that. Yeah. Yeah. Did you sort of discover that you were funny at any specific point, or did that sort of emerge? Just after I told the jokes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's normally the moment it happens. During the setup, you don't get such a clue. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know. I think that uh, 
I, I've always wanted to. I was, used to in my, when I was in my twenties, I never went to university. I know it sounds like I did. Mm. <laughs> um, I, uh, but I always wanted to be a pop star in my twenties. Yeah. And uh, and that didn't really happen. I wrote loads of songs and things, and then. I, I you play a few instruments, don't you, as well? Yeah, but I mean, who doesn't? Do you? I do. I think there are some. Yeah. How many instruments do you play? I play a lot of them badly. That wasn't the question, Ella. <laughs> How I, many do you play? I play the guitar, just the one. You play one instrument? Yes. That's it, the one I tell people I play. You're even, you said you play instruments. Now you're not even sure if you play the one. <laughs> You've gone back slightly, but you play one. I play the guitar. Play guitar, right. Hmm. Um, this bloke said to me, so I'm going to hit you with the neck of a guitar. I said, is that a fret? <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, that, that well, seemed to me... to you along. The yeah. string you along. Yeah. Yes. Oh, he's a plucky little fella. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, th I think that, um, that, that at the time, and I still think now, is I have no idea how one makes a success of the music, mm. making music. I don't know how that's all a big mystery. Yeah, uh, now, I suppose, you have to go on the X Factor or something. Don't you? But... Um, um, Big Whereas comedy is a definite routine, even now, there's a definite routine, although there's less clubs around now, but yeah. do if you ever feel like doing it, honestly, I recommend everybody, write five minutes of stuff, don't worry about, worry about whether it's funny or not, just try and make it funny, but write it and go and do it somewhere. <laughs> I absolutely, honestly, absolutely, it's, uh, it's worth doing. I've either gripped the room or bought it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's definitely yeah, yeah. worth doing. I absolutely, you know, the thing is, Making a fool of yourself. I don't know what it is about humans. We're so desperately worried about making a fool of ourselves the whole time. It stops us doing all sorts of things. If you get past, if you see this thing about the, you know, making a fool of myself, if you can get over that hurdle, there's a whole world of fun the other side of it. <laughs> it's, so just forget that. Just get over that hurdle of whether or not you make... Who cares if you make a fool of yourself? We'll, we'll all be dead in okay. you know, 300 <laughs> years' time. There'll be someone else sitting there. <laughs> Being interviewed by you. Asking whether or not... <laughs> yeah, mm. Asking whether or not the layout has changed. <clears throat> um, what, what was it... <laughs> what, what was it exactly... Um, when? About your, your upbringing that meant that sort of at least two of, two of the siblings uh, in your family became so famous in, in such different ways, do you think? We did different things. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Um, I don't know, really, but I... I I never liked it. I think of being famous particularly, but um, well, we both, you see, in our 20s, we both wanted to be pop stars. So Jeremy wanted to be a pop star as well, if you can imagine such a thing. Um, in fact, he, we were in a band called the Flair Generation where we wore these <laughs> large flared trousers, and um, he was the lead singer for a bit, and yeah. that was, it was great. <laughs> um, he, by his own admission, he is probably tone deaf. But that didn't affect the songs, actually. Didn't, <laughs> it's, if anything, it sort of improved it. It was more of a visual treat. Yeah. Um, so we did that. Um, and, then, and then he kind of did the more serious thing. I, I don't understand politics, really, to yeah. the degree that he does, certainly. So he went into that area of things, and I was doing puppy shows and things and yeah. messing about. This is great, isn't it? <laughs> Shall we all go out tonight in Cambridge? <laughs> en masse. Let's just go to one pub and order two drinks. <laughs> but yeah, so I don't know quite what was it in the upbringing. I have no idea. No idea. I remember the first thing my mum said to me when I was born. She said, ah, I was expecting you. <laughs> Apparently, if you dangle a needle over a pregnant <clears throat> woman's stomach and it goes round and round like that, it means you can have a girl. And if it goes side to side like that, it means you can have a boy. And if it gets pulled downwards, it means you can have a magnet. <laughs> And this midwife, this midwife said to me, she said, Tim, have you ever been present at the birth of a baby? I said, yes, once. She said, what was it like? I said, it was dark, then suddenly very light. <laughs> so, one more. So I, I said to this barn owl, I said, I've just got engaged. He said, you twit to who? <laughs> what drew you to puns? Pardon? What drew you to puns? Um, I, do know, I, don't, I, I don't know whether I am particularly drawn to puns, but I'm drawn to short jokes. Yeah. Just because I don't like the kind of the too long a gap between laughs. It makes me nervous. <laughs> you know, do you get that along? I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me too, me too, Alon. I get, I get yeah, that a lot, yeah. yeah. But um, 
Yeah, so I, I think I like short jokes. So if I mm. could say, um, it don't, they don't have to be puns, though. Yeah. I mean, okay, I could say I went on a date with a girl called Simile. I don't know what a metaphor. <laughs> That's a pun. But then I yeah. could also say, um, the, uh, the other day I lost my tree, so I nailed a picture of it to a dog. <laughs> That's, that's not a pun. That's not a pun. That's more of a twist. Yeah. So I've got a few like that where you just sort of swap it. Like if you, if, you know, if you chop a horse in half, then bang the two halves together, it sounds like someone riding a coconut. Yeah. I was in my back garden the other day and I saw a, uh, I saw a toucan. That's quite rare, isn't it, to see a toucan in your back garden? Then I got a bit closer, I realised it wasn't a toucan, it was a magpie eating a banana. <laughs> That's not a pun either. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have sort of desert island jokes that you can just say? So I was on this beach. <laughs> um, and uh, I saw this young boy swimming on his own, so I threw him a pair of binoculars. He said, what are these for? I said, you need supervision. <laughs> How do you take that? Hmm? How do you take it? Did we hit a time loop? <laughs> how do I take what? The, how uh, did he take it? How did he take did he it? Oh, I see. No, it didn't actually happen a lot. It was uh, <laughs> just a joke. <laughs> but when you say desert island jokes, what do you mean, though? Well, I are there, would you say there's a collection of sort of really great jokes that you've really enjoyed telling, that you find perhaps are your favourites? Well, they're not much use on a desert island, are they? I mean, if you're Depends on your own, desert, well, I suppose one other person. I find with just one other person, comedy doesn't quite... It doesn't really work, but um, I, have so I have certain jokes that are kind of banker jokes. Yeah. So if I write a new hour, I, where I, f I might end up with maybe 12 strong jokes. <laughs> <laughs> God, that's a really depressing thought, isn't it? <laughs> but anyway, imagine I've got 12 absolute haymakers. Yeah. The equivalent of when you're boxing and you knock the guy onto the floor briefly. One of those ones. <laughs> if you're going to do that, you don't want it all to happen the first round, do you? You want to spread out. You like to knock him out once in the first yeah. round. Wobble him in the second. Wobble him a bit in the... Th knock him, flatten him in the fourth. <laughs> Let him get up in the fifth. Get a few body shots. Perhaps leave with the jab during the sixth. <laughs> Take a couple of hits yourself during the seventh. <laughs> Go down in the eighth yourself. Yeah. Be booed off. <laughs> Climb back into the ring. <laughs> Hit the ref. Then knock the other guy out. He gets up again, knock him down again, and knock down maybe... I have heard it said... <laughs> I've heard it said that what you should do is... Uh, I think it might have been the comic Ed Byrne who said this, but you should start with your second best joke and end with your best joke. Which is an interesting way of looking at it. Okay. Which is, in other words, it, you should don't... It is important where you place the stronger jokes. Yeah. Which, in a way, doesn't answer the question you asked. But it sort of does, does it? But anyway, do I have I, the strong jokes? You spread them out yeah. throughout the hour. And in terms of the jokes that you tell in the hour, you said earlier, so you, you have a set list that you sort of hide by your props. Mm. Um, how? That's if I'm doing, an, as if I'm touring, yes. and I have to do an hour. Okay. If I'm doing twenty minutes, it's like it's like an inward uh, internal storm going on. I'm thinking yeah. to myself, what next? What next? Most of the time, it's a, it's a very painful experience, <laughs> and I just. Take a bit from here and a bit from there and a bit, from, you know, and it's then. Yeah. Sort of, it's just when I'm doing ten minutes. Perhaps if I'm doing twenty minutes, I've rehearsed. So then, but when you're on tour, how on earth do you sort of condense such a long list of jokes into a set list? How do you codify that? Do you mean what well, do you mean? You how do you find out what's funny? Well, how do you write down all of those jokes and on? on well, a piece I write, of paper? write them down as one word and then a little slash like that. So I'll go, like for example, um, you know, the metaphor one, metaphor, slash, <laughs> toucan, slash. Monkey, tin opener. I haven't told that one, have I? No, not yet. <laughs> I saw this monkey with a tin opener. <laughs> I said, you don't need a tin opener to peel a banana. He said, I know, this is for the custard. <laughs> Slash. <laughs> Doctor. Um, hypochondria. He said, you got hypochondria. I said, not that as well, that one. <laughs> Slash. Rash. Have you got a rash? I'll be as quick as I can. Slash. I think I've got a heart complaint. He said, murmur. I said, heart complaint. <laughs> that one. Murmur. I write murmur slash. Yeah. 
parachute slash. I think a parachute jump was the scariest thing I've ever, ever refused to do. <laughs> Actually, I did once do a parachute jump, and um, of course they attach you to the instructor, don't they? And you jump out together. So I was in the aeroplane, they attached me to this bloke, and we jumped out, and it was really frightening, because halfway down, he said, how long have you been an instructor? <laughs> that would be one of the ones I'd spread out. <laughs> that would be one of the ones where I'd catch him on the chin. Hopefully. But anyway, yes, yeah, so I write down like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just individual words like that. Yeah. But you know what? The, the only, there's, there's no shortcuts for... Uh, and, and all comics will say this. Uh, you, you, the only way to find out what's funny is you just have to try out an audience. Yeah. So, um, for example, you're an audience. I'll try out a brand new joke and then I'll decide whether or not it deserves to be done again. Okay? Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of something I've written recently. Um, well, I've just recently joined the... Um, I, I, I've joined... I haven't learned it yet. I've... Uh, <laughs> I just, I went to the, um, I've just joined <laughs> the um, Scarecrow Appreciation Society. They welcome me with open arms. <laughs> mm, not really, I mean, there's something there, it I works. think. It <laughs> oh, I don't know. Well, I, I made, it's, I won't drop it yet. But it was a little bit, you know. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. That's all right, um, yeah, cheers. So... <laughs> It's now been about, I think, two years since you finished I, your... I, we haven't been that long, have we? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know we've hit a lull, but be honest. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing my best, Alon. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's been about two years since you finished, I think, the fifth series. Um, yes, that would have, yeah, of, it would have been about uh, like two years ago, yeah. Not going out. Are you happy yeah. with your decision to stop not going out? And where have you been since? Uh, abso absolutely, I'm happy to have left it. Yeah, I, I, I kind of, I don't, I don't want to do anything forever. You know, lots of people, I mean, I'm very proud to have been in it. And I think whenever it's on, I always watch it and laugh. Um, but um, not necessarily just at my own bits. Do you want yeah, I just didn't want to do it, go off into the sunset doing the same thing. You know, it was, I was, you know, there's only so many times you can walk into a room and go, what's going on in here, you know? But uh, not that I was doing that all the time. But um, uh, yeah, so that's, yes, I am pleased. I say I'm pleased to have left it. I think it was yeah. the right decision. I haven't regretted it, let's put it that way. Okay. Yeah. And I was going to ask you um, if you enjoyed working with Lee Mack, but then I realised that might be a bit of a leading question. Uh, very so good. <laughs> <laughs> but so I, I do, very much so. In fact, I saw Lee on Sunday night. We were doing a, um, a gig somewhere in, uh, um, in London. It was a charity gig. Voluntary yeah. work. I wouldn't do it if you paid me. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, so, so, no, it's great fun. And of course, not going out is really it's his thing. You know, it's, his, it's his baby. He, the amount of work he puts into the writing of it and stuff yeah. is incredible. You know, he locks himself in a room somewhere and writes and writes and writes. So he's one of the hardest working people I know, whereas I'm, I'm very more lazy, really. Yeah. So, so in that sense, it was, that, it, was a, it was a nice job in that sense. I used to turn up and just do what I was told, you know, as opposed to having, you know, I'd turn up at the last bit and the fun bit, whereas he had to lock himself in a room and write it, which is a lot harder to do. Um, but, uh, yeah, and I've just finished doing a thing, a Blandings. Have you heard of that? So no. PG Woodhouse <laughs> thing. Okay. But, but it's, um, it's not, I mean, it's, it's comedy, but in a PG Woodhouse way. Okay. So, uh, how would you describe that? I think you did it well. Did I? Oh, okay. Well, anyway, that's what it is. <laughs> um, and I play a butler. Mm called Beach, and um, um, I'm frequently tied out. <laughs> no, I, um, I walk in, I go, very good, my lord, and then, then decide on which eyebrow to raise. That's pretty much the, what the part involves. Very good, my lord. <laughs> so, uh, but it's been good fun, spent uh, um, six weeks in Northern Ireland. I say that because I just came back uh, two days ago. Yeah. Tequila, slap, Sambuca, I'm calling for shots. <laughs> so... Another thing I wanted to ask is... Yes. You use music... Whatever you want to ask me, Elon, you can ask me. Thank you. Um, <laughs> you use music quite a lot. I'm actually. not answering that. <laughs> I use music sometimes, yes, I do, yeah. Who writes your music? Um, well, I do, but it's uh, mainly a lot of ditties, aren't they? You know? Yeah. My mother speaks like this. My father speaks like this. <laughs> so I speak like this, which can be rather embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of, you know... I've got a song called Ode to My Girlfriend's Mother. Hmm. 
It goes like this. Oh, to my girlfriend's mother, 10,000 pounds. <laughs> Um, so I have these things with, you know, with music. Half past seven, quarter to three, ten to eleven, good times! <laughs> yeah. It shows you the sort of level it's pitched at. They're quite, they're quite short songs, actually, aren't they? Quite short, yeah. Short ditties. Ditties, yeah. Would you, that's, is there new ditty. New, new ditty. I've often thought there was a joke there somewhere. Have you, there's, ni- there's no new ditty, new ditty in my show. <laughs> I'll only be doing old songs. It's upset her. She's leaving. Look. <laughs> I'm only going to be doing old songs. There's no new ditty. Yeah, it's good. There's no new ditty. <laughs> I'm actually totally deaf. Never thought I'd hear myself say that. <laughs> You are all leaving, gradually. <laughs> if this is what is happening, I'd like to be told. There's someone at the back of the room with a headset. Row three, seat F. Go, go, go. <laughs> so I guess following on from that, is there, would you say there's a worst experience that sticks out in your mind from any specific show uh, that you've done? Well, all of it's quite... I mean, to be honest, none of it's... A terrible experience because it, even when you die, it's quite. In fact, those are probably the funniest stories. You know, when you when you get home and you say, "God, it's, you know, I walked on and they didn't." You know, they, no one was laughing and it was horrific. But I mean, it's you know, it doesn't matter, does it? it doesn't matter, does it? You know, when you look at it alongside yeah. Burma. <laughs> That's true. It's always been my view. Until the day I did a gig in Burma. <laughs> stormed it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's... Uh, stormed it? Is that, I don't, you made a joke there. You probably know more about the situation out there than I do. <laughs> but yeah, North Korea, all those sort of, those, are, those are places where, where serious things are happening. And so if you, if you simply go on stage and do 20 minutes and no one laughs... That's not really, it's not bad, is it? I always think, even when my job doesn't go well, it's still a good way to earn a living. I mean, for example, if you were told you were going to be given a certain amount of money, a, you know, a reasonable amount of money, I suppose a corporate, was, which is often quite well paid, imagine if you were told, right, you're going to go into that room, I want you to stand on that stage, and people are going to stare at you and shout at you for 20 minutes, and they will pay you. You'd still <laughs> do it, wouldn't you? You'd still do it. So, uh, yeah. you wouldn't get rebooked a lot, but... Uh, <laughs> So even when it goes badly, it's still quite a good thing to do. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any top tips for any budding comedian? Yeah, my advice is write your own stuff and do loads and loads of gigs. Mm. That's it. It's as simple as Fair that. Enough. Oh, what a, <laughs> what a tremendous jumper. That's fantastic. It's 12 pounds in Primark. 12 pounds in Primark. Excellent value. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Do you work there? <laughs> <laughs> No, right. What, what, let me try and guess what you're studying. Uh, textiles. <laughs> <laughs> Almost there. Nearly. Is it a language? No. Uh, is it? No. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Chemistry. <laughs> Physics. No, you're closer, closer. I'm getting closer. It's a science. It's a science. We study the letter A. <laughs> <laughs> Biology. It's not science. I tell you what, I'm learning a lot here today. Yeah, that great artistic course, biology. Um, uh, well in that case, something, you say it's not science. It's a science. It's science. It's science. Science in the name. Science is in the name. Yes. Oh, uh, is it science? <laughs> Halfway there. All right. Sai? Uh, science, halfway there. Bioscience, phys- physical science, Sci- the science of sport, sports science. That's about as far as you can get from what I am saying. It's further away. Uh, ast- astronomy. 
Um, this is, I have to say, since you've arrived, the gig's picked up. <laughs> um, it's further the... Further, look, if she's coming back. She's heard the laughter. <laughs> the, um, it's, it's a type of science. It's a type of science, yeah. But it's further away than it's anything I've said. Not it's definitely not sports science. So it's uh, the science of uh, language. No. The, uh, dentistry. <laughs> uh, skin. Um, graphic design science. No. Can you give me a clue? Give me a clue. Ah, you're a typist. Right. It's quite, do you play an instrument? Because if it's the violin, you're terrible at it. So it's uh, so you play the piano. You don't. Computing. Ah, oh. I hear it's all the rage. <laughs> Have you seen my new ventriloquist website? It's on gubbly 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 got. It's worth a look at. Do you know, I went to the computer shop. I said, whenever I plug in my laptop, it overheats. He said, that's not a laptop. It's a George Foreman bar and grill. <laughs> And what, out of interest, what's your name out of interest? I'm Bruce. I'm Bruce. Um, <laughs> the, what's, what, what are you hoping it will lead to, that, um, the computing thing? Is it, do, you want, do you want to work in computers when you leave out of here? You don't want to work in them. <laughs> it is about this stage in an evening, people think anyone can do this, it's true. This is a... <laughs> But what, but what do you want to do with computers, though? What, what is it you want to... Have you got some sort of thing you want to do that's... I'm just fascinated because I'm so non complete I can't even say the word, to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> well, you've got issues that can't be dealt with here. <laughs> I don't think I should talk to him anymore. <laughs> I knew the jump was a giveaway. Now, um, oh, Lon, how are you? Hello. How long have you been there for? Uh, I think. <laughs> where's that? Where's your name from, Lon? My name is from Israel. It's a great Hebrew name. Fantastic. It means oak. Oak. Oak, as in oak tree. Great. As in joke tree. Well, not really as in joke. No. As in oak. That's great. Yeah. You've got a bit of a. You're a proper sturdy chap. You have got a bit of the oak tree about you. Thank you. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I just, you know, yeah, that's, uh, that's great. Oak. Do you know what Timothy means? That's also Hebrew, I think. A I lot, think of, these, a lot it, of these... Is it Hebrew? Well, it's a biblical name, isn't it? It might be Greek. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what. I, that was deliberate. It was deliberate. <laughs> is it Greek? What does it mean, then? He's absolutely right. <laughs> yeah. You good. knew that as well. You just were trying to make it look all blasé. Well, I, just as a, a total stab in the dark. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I don't study Greek. I'm just trying to work it out from the vowel sounds. Uh, deserving of honour? I mean, it's probably... Oh, that's right, is it? All right. Well, I think on that note, uh, let's open... Uh, the windows. It's boiling in here. <laughs> Let's open the questions to the floor. So, uh, Let's ask the questions from the floor. <laughs> <laughs> no, B hasn't got anything for us. If everyone... He's bored. <laughs> <laughs> questions from the floor, anyone? If everyone could just wait for a microphone. Um, and would you like to pick people? Do you want me to choose people? Well, it's probably best to pick the people who, who want to ask the questions. <laughs> Good tip. If someone's got their hand up, we point at someone else. This, uh, this, I'll leave uh, it in your hand. Yeah. So please wait for a microphone. Right. Oh, them, right. Well, there's someone with their hand up over there. And there's a man with his hand up. And uh, there we are. There's a woman with a high visibility jacket, just so there's absolutely no doubt where the microphone's coming from. Because <laughs> if you have a microphone appearing towards you and you don't know who's holding it, that could be flipping dangerous. You could have your eye out. <laughs> right, so... Uh, that's what the high-vis jackets are about, just so you know. Um, 
You're wearing some sort of high vis shirt for a uh, <laughs> tomato orchard. Anyway, Tim, yes. um, I was How wondering you? if you could uh, sing us some more of your fantastic songs. No. <laughs> um, no, of course I could. But it, that's very sweet of you to say they're fantastic. Did you have one in, in particular that you'd like to hear? I'd have to do it a cappella. I should have brought the. Um, I don't know I did bring the. Um, did you say you have got a CD player out there? Well, I don't mean to drown me out. I mean... <laughs> well, if you had, I, I, I think I might have a... a, a could, you get, could you get my bag from the, uh, the office? Which one in... Thanks a lot. Cheers. Let's hear it for this chap here. He's running out. <laughs> I think he's dropped something. <laughs> bit of chewing gum stuck on his finger. <laughs> um, which one? Did he have one in particular? Uh, any, any at all. Okay, well, okay, well, maybe if, there's, if he's got it on the CD. He said, oh, here comes a bag. I can play YouTube. You can play YouTube? Can you stop showing off, please? <laughs> Thanks. Um, let me just have a little... Uh, I think I'm pretty sure that I've got... Uh, I thought I... <laughs> I did because I think I thought to myself maybe I might you know I might sing the odd song and I forgot to say that to you Alon sorry I should have really right. done that this is a, this is a um, this is just just normal kind of bag <laughs> um, it's, a, it's a hat <laughs> incidentally the, 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 on the subject of hats because um, I have thought about doing the equivalent of the pen behind the ear with this look. <laughs> ah, the, the uh, thank you. Um, which uh, oh, there's not much on it now. Look at it. <laughs> okay, that's a good one. Well, it's not good, but it's uh, it's on there. <laughs> So we could do the entire thing. If you've got that, you say there is a CD that works up there, isn't it? Uh, it's all right. Did you say there is a CD player that works? Is oh, sorry. Well, that's all right. We can listen to it like this. <laughs> but anyway, I, I uh, well, you could, you could pretty, pretty play it off a, a laptop. Very clever. <laughs> but surely my singing will be on YouTube, wouldn't it? <laughs> I don't think this is going to work for you. Um, <laughs> but, I, but I could do a, um, I, I could do an a cappella version of a, of a song, um, which is uh, a, song, uh, a song called Alarm Bells, which is quite a short one. Um, where When a man wears trousers, he's still a man. When a girl wears trousers, she's still a girl. When your dad wears lipstick, alarm bells. <laughs> alarm bells, alarm bells. When a vicar smiles, he's being nice. When a vicar prays, he's being kind. When the vicar's head revolves, alarm bells, <laughs> alarm bells, alarm bells. When a roller coaster's fast, it makes you feel high. When a roller coaster spins, the world whizzes by. When there's blood on the seats, alarm bells, alarm bells, alarm bells. When an airline pilot is fast in your seatbelts, that's all right. When he says it's a bit of turbulence, it's just part of the flight. When you overhear him say, what does that like mean? Alarm bells, <laughs> alarm bells, alarm bells. In your life, there are sights and smells. This bit isn't funny. <laughs> but listen out for those alarm bells. For example, I am now a quarter of the way through my act. <laughs> Question. Keep hope alive. How are you, sir? Was he here last night, by the way, Jesse Jackson? Just yeah. suddenly randomly going. Did he sit in here and do? He stood right here, right here. Marvelous. Love him. Next question, please. Um, where did the inspiration for hockey stick behind the ear come from? Well, 
This may come as a huge surprise to you. <laughs> but it was pen behind the ear. <laughs> It was the main inspiration for that. The, uh, yeah, no, really, it was a case of um, trying to get as, milk it as much as possible. <laughs> if I get something that works, I tend to think to myself, well, maybe I could call back to that and do it again in a different way and try and, you know. So I did actually have number hippo for a bit, but he never worked properly. <laughs> um, yeah, so it was pen behind the ear. I just thought I'd try and do it with something bigger. If anyone's got a hockey stick with them, I can't do that. <laughs> This, uh, this, uh, I mean, to be honest, we can hear each other, can't we? But, uh, who are your favourite comedians and how do you deal with hecklers? Um, well, my favourite comedians are... Well, a lot of the ones that are around at the moment I, I really like just because well, ones that still, sort of were on the circuit when I started. So, um, well, if you name one, I'd probably like them. Uh, but also a lot of the dead ones. Um, my favourite ones, not because they're dead, but because I, I grew up, those are the ones I grew up with. So there's, there's two very different groups. There's the ones that I grew up watching as a child, so Morecambe and Wise, Les Dawson, Tommy Cooper, and all these people that I watched on television when I was younger. There's that group who always felt slightly, who were brilliant, but out of touch from my world. And then there was this group of people that, I, when I actually joined the circuit myself at the very bottom, there were people like Eddie Izzard, Alan Davis, Bill Bailey... Um, Lee Evans and all these people were on the circuit and I was watching in little clubs doing their 20 minute sets and so those people were my inspiration then it was because I was trying to get to do 20 minutes you know so so that was the uh, yeah but pretty much it's always interesting watching any comedian live I think if you if you're interested in doing comedy you think you sort of watch them and think oh yeah that's clever <laughs> um, <laughs> I hope that answers your question Oh, right, sorry, yeah, good heckle. Um, <laughs> how do I deal with hecklers? Well, normally I don't leave gaps for them. So if, you don't, if, you're not, if there's not enough of a gap for them to shout something out, then they won't shout something out. Heck, hecklers normally heckle because they're, they're, sometimes they're speaking on behalf of the audience if they're going, you know, you're rubbish, and the whole audience is feeling that, yes, he's speaking for all of us, you know, when that happens. Um, and that, those, that's harder to deal with because really what you've got there is you're probably spiralling out of control. But if you've got a lone nutter, as I call them, <laughs> that's a bit easier to deal with, because in that situation, the audience are on your side, and so really you can say pretty much anything to them, and the audience will back you up. But the best thing is, do your act and get off. Don't, don't, don't leave gaps, if possible. Try and get through the first minute without a heckle. The worst thing is when you go, good evening, and then someone shouts something. <laughs> Because, you know, they've not given you a lot to do. <laughs> it's getting quieter now, isn't it? <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, someone over there. Don't be frightened of the high visibility coming towards you. Hi. Um, Hi. Yeah, I've got a question. Obviously, we've spoken a lot this evening about your... You and I? <laughs> Excuse me? No, we've not met, but yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> No, yes. sorry, you've spoken a lot about your, or your interviewee has spoken a lot about your potential career. Interviewer. Interviewer. I was Excuse the interviewee. Me. <laughs> All right, we can run this Thank past you. the guy who does the Greek, but he's gone. He's gone. The Greek guy's gone. I think he's gone to get a drink. Anyway, excuse me, sorry. Um, Where's that voice come? Oh, it's you. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Sorry, yes, go so on. So anyway, yeah. so we've, we've established the sort of parts of your career, like what you've done in your particular history... Um, how you got into comedy. So I'm particularly interested to know, in say the next 10, 15 years, wh where do you sort of see your, your particular career going? So obviously Eddie Izzard is no longer in, shall we say, in the comedy circuit. He's more into film. Do you see yourself going maybe in the Family Guy direction or you what, know, maybe... Voicing going, cartoons? Yeah, with... <laughs> yeah, well, I, I don't know, mind just, that. Or did, like, for example, Miranda Hart obviously started mm. and did sort of... Co well, she would never did much stand-up, actually, Miranda. She did a little bit, but she was always more sort of character sketches and stuff, really. So she was never quite on the circuit in quite the same way. Man. But um, to be honest, I don't really have a kind of long-term plan. I'm, I'm always pleasantly surprised that I do this for a living anyway. So, you know, if I can get another year out of it, I always think that's great, um, is the honest answer. I mean, the idea that I've just come to Cambridge University to chuck a pen behind my ear is... Uh, <laughs> 
says it all, really. But um, I do get asked to do some strange things. I mean, I'm, I'm the sort of person who, who doesn't book holidays to go int to interesting places. I wouldn't think to sort of... Do, and yet, with the, I, the job I've got has taken me all to all kinds of great places. So um, as long as that keeps happening, I'll carry on going with the flow, really. I'd like to do more acting, maybe. I'd like to do a film, just because I want to go to the Epsomodian near where I live and look at, uh, at my head that size. <laughs> <laughs> but there doesn't seem to be any sign of that happening. So, uh, but, um, so I'm, th I'm thinking of funding something myself and then, you know, putting it on in a little cinema somewhere, which I've done once before to a whole lot of friends. And then I sort of lost contact with those friends. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so uh, maybe a bit of acting, um, more jokes, do another, do another stand-up tour. Uh, I'd like to do a graphic novel. <laughs> um, I'd like to come up with some recipes. Pardon? You've ruled out Family Guy? I've ruled out the Family Guy. No, I haven't ruled out that, the Family Guy. I haven't. Are you about to pitch a job offer to me? <laughs> I, haven't ruled, I haven't ruled out anything. I've ruled out, nothing's been ruled out. I mean, I won't be coming back here next week, but, uh, <laughs> but pretty much nothing's been ruled out, yeah. I mean, the main thing is that uh, I just try and put off as long as possible doing an actual job. Second other question. Hey, you've already had one. <laughs> but see, no one else is asking questions. So, oh, is that, are they? No. Oh, this gentleman here. How long have you been at the university, sir? <laughs> You're a great advert for how much fun it is to be here, man. <laughs> Are you studying? Pardon? Are you studying? No, I'm retired. Well, we're all tired. Oh, I see, you're retired. So. <laughs> retired. Retired? Oh, do you, be, you're at the university there, are you? Or? I studied here. I did work here all the time. Oh, OK. So you work here now, do you? No, no you're no, retired. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> just, just going around in circles now. Um, are you retired? Yes. <laughs> what were you doing? Am before? I asking the questions or are you? Well, <laughs> it's more fun this way around for a minute. It's just, uh, <laughs> but what were you doing when, before you retired then? Uh, the same as the guy over there, computer science. Computer science, yeah. right, okay. But you were doing that for a living here? Uh, no. Some of the time here and some of the time in other places. Okay, oh, great. So now you, you, you heard about this event. How did you hear about this? You were... Because I'm a member of the union. And we oh, get I see. So once you're part of the union, you can be part of the union forever? Uh, well, as long as you live. <laughs> right. But there's not a lot of take up in your age group here, is there? <laughs> but I'm, I'm surprised it's not more. Um, you know, I suppose you've got to be local. Yes. To a certain extent, yeah. But you're, you, uh, when did you leave the university? 83. 83? Oh, you don't look 83. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but anyway, what's your question? My question is um, whenever I've tried to do anything funny, I collapsed because I, if I think it's funny, I laugh at it. So right. how do you avoid laughing at your own jokes? Well, that's... Uh, do you... Really, it always happens? You always collapse when... <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say, it sounds quite a rare ailment you've got there. <laughs> I mean, it, because the thing is, I, I normally... When I come up with a joke that's for the first time, I normally laugh then. But then, then when I tell it, that's probably then that's the, uh, the second time. Well, I've probably rehearsed it a few times. Then when I tell it in front of an audience, that's probably about the twentieth time I've heard it. And then I tell it again. So it's sort of, after a while, you can see it coming. <laughs> but do you mean when you say things, occasionally I make myself laugh if I say something off the cuff and it tickles me. But, but normally, I, normally it's other people laughing that make me laugh, actually. But occasionally I have, once in a while, I've had a situation where people in the front row were laughing so much that I suddenly sort of joined in. It was very unprofessional. <laughs> And, uh, and we all sort of cried together. It was, a very, it was an amazing experience, actually. <laughs> and we couldn't get any words out. We were no longer laughing. I don't know what we were doing. It was just like a laughter therapy session or something. Was, the whole place was just laughing together. It was great. That was in Leicester, I remember that. <laughs> but yeah, so the answer is, you'll find if you keep telling the jokes, you, that were not... Does it always happen? Do you always...? <laughs> so each time you tell the joke, you then laugh at it. Right. Well, it's good that you have that much confidence in, <laughs> in your own material. Um, perhaps if you just cover your mouth at the point at which you think you're going to laugh. <laughs> any of that might help. There's a, a hand up over there. I think he wants either the microphone or, or um, 
a uh, physician. Yeah. Microphone. Microphone. What, what's your all-time favorite joke? Is it one of your own? Uh, well, no, I, I, not of my own, no. I mean, I, I think my favorite joke is the guy who's at a boating lake and, uh, and all the boats have, have got numbers on them and he goes, uh, and he's got a megaphone and he goes, come in, num hang on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Come in, number 91, your time is up. And then the bloke next to him says, we haven't got a 91. He goes, number 16, are you in trouble? <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favourite jokes. My dad, my dad told me that joke when I, when I was growing up, so that was one of the jokes that I, that I have a tough spot for, along with the, another, another announcement in a, in a train station. The train arriving at platforms one, two, three, four, five, and six is coming in sideways. <laughs> <laughs> These are all old jokes, eh, Sandra? They're, they're a lot better than mine. But uh, of my own, I like uh, one arm butlers. So they can take it, but they can't dish it out. <laughs> um, I've got a friend who's got a butler whose left arm is missing. Says him right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so those two, I also like the one about the, um, the bloke goes, uh, he goes into, a, is a bank robber, and he goes into a, into a bank and says, uh, uh, put your hands up or your geography, and the bloke goes, don't you mean history? He says, don't change the subject. <laughs> <laughs> These are all old jokes. There's, what's the other one? Um, uh, I've just found out that I'm, uh, I'm colour blind. That came as a bolt out of the green. I like that. <laughs> Do you know, here's, uh, actually, there's a joke that I've been doing um, in my own acts, which, I, which I, that I'm quite fond of at the moment, which is that um, um, burglars are getting very clever now, aren't they, burglars? Um, I was, I was in, in bed la last night, and my wife woke me up. She said, she said, darling, wake up. She said, I think there's a burglar downstairs. Can you, can you go and check? So I, so I got out of bed. I went downstairs, and I looked in every room, and there was nobody there. And then suddenly I remembered, I haven't got a wife. <laughs> So I dashed back upstairs, but it was too late, the bed had gone. <laughs> so I like that one. Um, but yeah, so there's a selection for you. Shall we take just two more questions? Yes, let's do that. There's one from the Greek scholar. <laughs> yes. <Do you> <laughs> it's gone. Do you ever tell rude jokes, and if not, why? Um, the, well, in, in private I sort of do, yeah, sometimes. But, but I, my act is just very childish, so I suppose it doesn't really suit my act, I suppose. And sometimes I get kind of, when I'm touring, you occasionally you get sort of families and you have a kind of, you know, a father there with his 10-year-old son or something, and if I suddenly out of the blue from doing Velcro, what a rip-off, and doing all that sort of thing, <laughs> and, then, and then suddenly went, well, and did, did, did a knob joke or something, that would be... <laughs> So, uh, so I, ten I tend to just keep it silly, you know. But in private, yeah, if someone tells me something funny, I mean, we all say all sorts of things to our friends, don't we? Yeah. But my, uh, I tend to, it's just, to have a, it's a bit like someone like Harry Hill or something like that. It's not, a, Harry Hill, he's not, if you asked Harry about, you know, why, why he does clean stuff, does it, would, would he, why, is, it, is it some sort of, you know, hard, fast rule that he's decided he won't do rude stuff? He'd say no, it just doesn't suit the act, you know. If you, if you have a particular, you've chosen a um, direction, I suppose you ought to go in it. Or something. <laughs> I won't ask you if you know any rude ones. <laughs> any other questions? Well, it was two more, wasn't it? Should we do one more? Oh, Would one you like more two more? No, well, no, 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 the maths is right, one more. Yes. <laughs> Hello there. Or are you doing a Lord? Forgive us. Shall a high five? Yes. <laughs> When you're around your friends and family, do you feel like you have to be the funny one? Uh, no, but I, I always think that people sometimes say to me, God, it must, be, it must be a bit of pressure having to always try and be funny. But most of the time, that's what we do with our friends anyway, don't we? If you're with friends and family, you know, I, I'm trying to be funny anyway because that strikes me as the, right, the fun way to go through life is to you know, just mess about, isn't it? You know? If I'm with my nieces and my nephew, I'm just, I'm just messing about the whole time, you know, so... Um, so it's not a pressure, but I, uh, yeah, most of the time I'm trying to be silly. But that's just because that's the best way to get through this, uh, this thing called life. 
it's, uh, it's the best thing, isn't it? It's just to mess about and be silly and try and keep everything light-hearted because there's plenty of uh, stuff that isn't. And I refer you to Burma. <laughs> um, yeah. So there we go. But I mean, I, I uh, do, do people do, when people do these things, do they do they tend to do a kind of a, a speech, sort of you know, follow your dreams type speech? Is that what you? Is that what happens? People follow their dreams in, in terms of how they want to end. So feel free to, in the words of Jesse Jackson, follow your dreams. And have you been smoking something? <laughs> <laughs> It's the, uh... <laughs> no, but you know what I mean. Do they? Is that what they tend to do? Do they feel a slight pressure because they're talking to students that they should s say to you, all, "Hey, each and every one of you, get out there." And is that what? Is that a lot of people do that? Do they? I mean, it's slightly sort of several. End in a kind of not sort of everyone, but yeah, quite a few. Perhaps I'll end like that. that then. I'll end like that. Follow you. <laughs> Sometimes when you're in bed at night and you close your eyes, you, you have a dream, don't you? And, and sometimes they're really quite obscure, aren't they? Don't follow that dream. <laughs> Now that, I just thought of, I might write down and try somewhere else. Right, there we are. <laughs> um, but yeah, yes, there we are. I think I may have finished. Okay, well... Well, I don't know, it's up to you. It's up to you. How have we got longer, haven't we? No, do we, what, what happens now? You do some um, dancing. No. That's later. <laughs> is there a club that you all go to? This is it, isn't it? <laughs> but is there, is, there, uh, is there one that's a sort of student club and then... And then where dancing happens, and you know, and then there's one where it's very much locals. There are clubs where you guys I have never been outside this building. Have you? <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, it's like I really rattled you. I, I, I understand that there is something outside the walls. Yes, I. I occasionally hear traffic, but I can't tell you more than that. We've heard chattering and screaming, but these people are not for us. <laughs> what about restaurants? Restaurants, there are a few of those as well. A few restaurants as well. Yeah, I was learning a lot. Yeah. You've left your heckle late. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Was it what? It's good of you to have brought one for yourself. <laughs> you thought ahead with the heckle. Yes. Maybe you should do what? We've taken someone to Lola Lowe's. We took Len McOpic to Lola Lowe's. <laughs> we, did. we did go clubbing. I think on two occasions he, he actually came. Lembit, uh, Lembit Opit and Twice. Lola Lowe's. It's hard to tell which one's the person, which one's the club. <laughs> Lola Lowe's. Yeah. Lola Lowe's. Lola Lowe's. What a great... Look at you. Yep, Lola Lowe's. <laughs> you heard it here, Tim. Lola Lowe's. <laughs> oh, yeah. What happens in Lola Lowe's? Is there a highlight? Lembit Opit well? <laughs> goes clubbing there. Right, is it? But it's a proper... Full it's on an establishment. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Do you Is mean that it's where quite you're a, going with your question? No, I don't know. You mean it's kind of quite a sort of... It's a nightclub, but it's fairly... It's probably a black tie, is it? <laughs> a bit like that. Right, right. Without the black tie. Right. Oh, that sounds great. What kind of music do they play in Lola Lowe's? <laughs> no, of course you haven't. <laughs> I've seen you there in your high-vis jacket. <laughs> In the right light, I bet that really glows. It does that glow into it. Yeah. Right, well, I think we're going to end there. Oh, cheers. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for coming. It's an absolute pleasure. Uh, big round of applause for Tim Vine. Yeah, that's...